aprovecho para preguntarte, ¿cómo te sientes? ¿Estás en un evento coestelar, en un evento numerado? ¿Cuál es el sentimiento en este Fight Week? Pues me siento bien, motivado, es una, es una, es una pelea grande, es algo bueno para mi carrera y es una gran oportunidad ¿no? para, para tomar todo el todo, todo el, el, el empujón, es una pelea grande, entonces me siento muy bien, estoy, estoy feliz, estoy motivado y el, y el día sábado salgo a trabajar. Estás cerca de tu décima victoria en el UFC. ¿Qué tan importante, más allá de, de, de los triunfos, de que eh, estés en un evento coestelar, es el que has podido hacer una carrera dentro de la promoción? Pues es algo grande para mí, para mi país, para mi familia y, y son cosas que me enorgullecen, ¿no? Saber que el trabajo duro, la disciplina y todo me ha traído tan lejos, ¿no? Y, y me va a seguir llevando hacia arriba por mi ética de trabajo. Muchos de los eh, focos van a estar puestos en Sean O'Malley, pero tú tienes esta posibilidad grande de colocarte en la élite del de, de peso gallo. ¿Cómo lo sientes? ¿Cómo ves la pelea? Pues me siento bien, es una pelea dura como cualquier otra y, y, estoy, y estoy, estoy contento, estoy, estoy fuerte y, y el día sábado voy a salir a acabar mi oponente. La, la última de mi parte, Chito, eh, ¿qué esperas de este número? Yo sé que no hay gente, yo sé que a lo mejor esta pandemia ha sido muy complicada para todos, pero el saber que estás ahí en, en, en ese lugar, ¿qué te hace sentir y cómo esperas la pelea? Pues me hace sentir bien, no es una pelea grande, es el come y ven y, y el día sábado pues salgo a una alegría a todo mi país, a toda la gente que me sigue. Perfecto, muchísimas gracias Chito, mucha suerte. Gracias chavalo. hermano, cuídate. Abrazo. And we will take our next questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey Chito, uh, I know this fight has been a long time coming. You were matched up with Sean uh, like a year ago. Uh, were you happy that you finally get the chance to face him? Was this kind of the fight you were hoping to get? Um, honestly, like I, I, as I said before, like I'm just happy when I get the call. You know, whoever is in the in the in the in the other side of the corner doesn't matter to me. And and when they offered me the fight, I was like, yeah, let's do it because I had a different fight. Uh, before I get offered this one, but then they call me and say, like, hey, what about this? I'm like, you guys send the contract, I signed it, though. it doesn't matter who's the name in the next side. And I, I know that, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of talk leading into this fight, but from what you've seen out of Sean O'Malley, have you been impressed by him at all? Uh, I'm going to be honest, you know, like, I know the guy is good. I know he has his stuff, you know, he has his style he, of fighting, you know, so... I cannot underestimate anybody at this at this point at this level because anybody can can get shut down. So at the end of the day, it's a hard fight as any other, and I'm prepared for that. And Saturday night, I'm gonna come hard and strong as always, and I'm fucking ready. How much do you pay attention to to kind of the kind of stuff that Sean O'Malley says? He's a very public guy, does a lot of interviews, has said a lot about you. How much do you pay attention, and do you use any of that as motivation? Oh no! And the, all the motivation came from from myself, from my heart, from my family, from from achieving my goals and and getting stuff done for me and and for the people that I love. And then the rest, you know, is just part of the show, part of the business. You know, uh, it's you know, it's fun. You know, I enjoy the process. I enjoy all these the, the shit talk, answering stuff. But I do it when I feel it, and sometimes I don't fucking feel it. I just want to fight, and that's why I like to be active and and be able to. To, to do this every two, three months because I really like to compete and that's what really matters to me. What my opponent has to say or not is good because I build the fight, put us in a good spot, but at the end of the, at, at, at the, end of the day, the cage is going to be locked and, and then it's the time that I really have fun, you know, when, when, I, when I'm able to compete and try to fuck somebody up. What did you make of Sean coloring his hair in the colors of the Ecuadorian flag? Well... That's that's a good question that a lot of people ask me, but honestly, I don't really know. It could be Venezuela, it could be Colombia, it could be Ecuador. We don't have the the, the logo on that, so I don't know which country he dyed his hair. But good for him, you know. I have yellow or blonde, so I'm supporter all the yellow flags out there. So good for him, you know. You gotta we're free to do whatever the fuck we want. That's why we pick this sport because we, you know, it's not like a regular job that. Somebody tell you what to do and when to do it. So good for him. So if he's trying to do it to try to get under your skin, because obviously, you know, being from Ecuador, it doesn't bother you. Oh, my, my, my skin is thicker than his mom. So I'm good with that. Uh, 
it's hard to get in my mind. I fucking, I was the youngest in the family. I got a lot of fucking bullets, like my brother, my everybody. So we grew up fucking a lot with Tar. So I'm good in that side, you know, win, lose, draw, whatever. I'm here to fight. I'm here to put in a show and Saturday night, and, you know, my paycheck's going to grow. Thank you, Cheetah. Best of luck. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And we will take the next question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, Chito. So, so everyone's talking about his hair. You're not usually blonde either. Can I ask what made you want to dye yours? Uh, in this hulk, when the quarantine started, I've been dyeing my hair. I went, well, I, well, my hair was pretty long at the beginning. So I, when I shaved my head again and went back to normal me, uh, it was in the beginning of the, when all this started with the COVID. And then I went from green to pink to blonde to blue. So in the quarantine, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I was the first fighter that died this hair because that's not true. We got Chris leaving many years ago, but I, I was one of the ones of the first ones on this era that I started redoing it. And I kind of like enjoying it. Uh, I kind of like was having fun with changing my colors every week because I was fucking bored. But now, you know, I just, I just go by feeling, you know, last week I was, it was pink. And then before that it was like almost white. So I'm just, you know, I'm fucking around, you know. There's nothing else to do besides fighting and dyeing your hair and get tattoos. Have you gotten new tattoos lately? Uh, I get my neck. I, I get a flower from, from this Russian chick uh, in LA. So, you know, tattoos are cool. You, you better be getting a bunch. All right, I got you. Hey, it's a fun time to be a Bantamweight. I mean, you've got a big three up there with Peter Jan, Marlon Moraes, and Aljo. Can I ask, how do you see all that playing out? When it's all over, which of those three do you think is going to be at the top? Um, I, I really feel like Aljo is the next in line. You know, he's been, he's been working his way up since he got a couple of tough losses. But that's something that I admire when somebody grinds his way up and, you know, gets shit done. I feel he's next in line, you know, Peter Jan did a, uh, a really good job getting the belt, but, you know, he's been in a past prime guy, you know, uh, all Aldo, which is a, it's a fucking legend. He was a, he was a hero back in the day, but let's be real right now. The guy cannot win a fight. So good for him. Forget the belt because the belt is the belt. Once you're the champion, you never go back, but I feel all you have to fight next to see really what's happening. And, and then it's a it's a pretty fun uh, division right now. Like I'm pretty excited. There's a there's a shit lot of good fights. So I'm excited to be here and let the bangers go. Obviously, if you get the win on Saturday, it would be a big deal. Can I ask? Up until this point, what has been the coolest moment of your career, either MMA or grappling? Um, I would say being in the UFC. Like the UFC is it's fucking amazing. Like like when I used to fight in South America, like the it's just it's just different, you know. When 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 it was when it when it's like in the shows before the UFC, it's like it's just it's just, it's just the fight day that matters because you know there's not like a fight week like we have in the UFC. Like since the staff, the people that work here, like how they make everything for you, like this is fucking cool. That's why this is the is the best league in in the world, you know, to be. And I'm I'm so blessed to be here, and I'm, I enjoy the whole process. So to me, the the coolest moment of my career is made it to the UFC. My final question for you, Chito. Obviously, you've imagined pulling off that upset, ending the hype and all that. When you think about the fight in your mind, how do you finish Sean O'Malley? I, I just see myself going in there and I, I, I'm fucking the guy up. Like, I'm, I, I'm pretty ready. I'm feeling good. I'm confident. And I show in every fight. I, I come to fight and I'm putting a show for the fans. And that's what they like. That's what they pay for. Nobody pays for a for a for a hogging contest or or you know or or a fight against the cage people pay for a for for a for a fight they're maniacs they they, they love bleeding they love fucking ex exchange so i'm here to put on a show i'm an entertainer and that's what i'm gonna do saturday night thanks chito thank you and we will take our next questions from adrian gallardo with vavel argentina uh, ¿qué tal, chito? Eh, muy buenas tardes. Todo bien. 
Eh, bueno, quería pre preguntarte cuál, cómo fue la preparación para esta pelea. Pues la, la preparación fue como todas, ¿no? Fue muy fuerte, con mucha dedicación, manteniendo un, un campamento bastante serio, bastante fuerte y, y me siento bien, me siento cómodo, me siento tranquilo y, y estoy en muy buena forma. Perfecto. Eh, ¿Pensás que O'Malley es uno de los rivales más importantes que tuviste hasta el momento y que va a ser una pelea relevante este próximo sábado en la Costelar? Es una pelea relevante, ¿no? Por eso es la Costelar, ¿no? Yo creo que están, están usando esta pelea para que el ganador de la pelea se vaya para arriba y, y obviamente agarre todo, toda la fuerza, los fanáticos y eso, ¿no? Entonces es una pelea grande y la estoy tomando en serio como lo he hecho en, en, en toda mi carrera, ¿no? Para mí la pelea que tengo enfrente es la más importante de mi vida, pero así mismo serán las siguientes que vienen, ¿no? Entonces me he preparado fuerte, me he preparado conciencia y, y estoy listo para el sábado. Eh, ¿Cómo tomaste las provocaciones que hizo Mali, por ejemplo, por lo del pelo y todo eso? Si les diste importancia, ¿y qué pensás de él más allá de esto como rival? No, pues para mí la, toda la importancia está en el negocio, ¿no? en hacer dinero, en ganar las peleas y, y imponer un espectáculo. ¿no? El resto, lo que, lo que se haga, lo que se diga, mis oponentes, para mí eso no, no tiene. ¿no? Ya tú, tú, que en lo personal que eres argentino, cuando peleé en Argentina, vieron todo lo que... Lo que mi oponente dijo, hizo y nada cambió, ¿no? Yo no me salgo de las vías del tren, ¿no? Para mí la, la meta es una y es, y es romperle la trompa al que tengo enfrente. Perfecto. Y para terminar, ¿un mensaje que le quieras dejar a todos los fanáticos de Latinoamérica? Pues a todos los latinos, darle las gracias por el apoyo. Uh, yo sé que están apoyándome, yo sé que están presentes, así que que no se olviden, ¿no? De que el que trabaja fuerte siempre consigue lo que quiere y, y el día sábado salimos con todo. Muchísimas gracias, Chito, y mucha suerte para el sábado. Gracias. And we will take our last set of questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Notima, Ecuador. Hey, ¿Qué tal, Chito? ¿Cómo estás? Lo primero que quiero preguntarte es, ¿cómo te sentiste tras tu última pelea en contra de Song Yadong? Me imagino que enojado por la pésima decisión, pero también contento por el apoyo que recibiste de todo el Ecuador. Sí, no, el apoyo fue grande, como siempre, es algo que me, que me motiva así relante, que me, que me hace feliz y... Y claro, ¿no? las cosas no se dieron como quería, las cosas pudieron haber sido mejor, pero al final del día son cosas que no podemos controlar y, y uno tiene que seguir mirándose el frente y trabajando. ¿Y cuáles consideras que son las fortalezas y debilidades de Sean? ¿Y piensas que esta es la pelea más importante de tu carrera? Pues la pelea que tengo enfrente siempre es la más importante de mi carrera, ¿no? sin importar quién sea. ¿no? Entonces yo no, yo no me enfoco mucho en, en quién es mi rival o qué hace o qué dice, yo me enfoco en, en mí, en ganar y, y estoy preparado para este sábado. Eh, la última vez que te realizaste la prueba de COVID, vimos de ahí que tenías un poco de problemas. ¿Qué pasó con esta vez? ¿Ya hemos acostumbrado o no? Claro, ya una vez que te acostumbras después de la, de la vez, de, de un par de veces ya, te, ya no te molesta mucho, ¿no? Pero las primeras sí fueron bien jodidas de hacer. <risa> eh, muchos de tus fanáticos piden el regreso de la cumbia chonera. Y mucha suerte para el sábado, Chito. Todo el Ecuador está contigo. Muchas gracias, lo aprecio mucho y, 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 y para todos los ecuatorianos que me apoyan, que están pendientes, le, le, le doy las gracias de corazón y que sepan que que el día sábado estoy preparado, estoy listo y, y pues en una de estas pelas pongo la, la música de nuevo. No he estado, siempre cambio en música, pero al final del día la bandera siempre sale conmigo y, y mi corazón, la tricolor siempre está presente.